This is the Free Hill Life Podcast, episode number 145. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Hill Life Shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. What's up, everybody? I'm back. And uh, good to be here. Monday mornings, always enjoy it. And always enjoy spending the day with all you out there. So uh, hopping into newsroom and notes, uh, many of you are probably celebrating a three-day weekend. And... Uh, we are as well. So by the time uh, you're listening to this, hopefully you're doing something fun or maybe you're not even tuning in on Monday and it's some other day of the week. But we're, uh, we're gearing up for uh, opening the shop in the month of October. We're still trying to finalize a, a date for that, but we are definitely on the move and you can feel it. We can feel it. We should be having some uh, some of our uh, early season orders starting to arrive by late September into early October. And that's always exciting because that's usually when things really start to, to turn up. Um, on that note, if you've got certain items that you're looking for or you're kind of starting to go through your preseason checklist and you're thinking, hey, this is the year maybe I need to buy a new pair of boots. Um, you know, maybe I need to, uh, my boots are good. I've got 75 millimeter boots and I'm thinking about, um, you know, just upgrading my bindings to something that has more part availability or something along those lines. You're, sh- you're shifting over to NTN, whatever it may be. Uh, this is a good time to reach out to us um, when we've got a little bit more time and we can kind of get you in the queue for different items. So when they arrive, we you know, we've already spoken to you, kind of know what your needs are and. Uh, can make sure to uh, alert you before everyone else. And uh, that's a good way to do it. We've got a great team of people at the shop that can help guide you through all sorts of funky questions and uh, gear switching, um, matching what kind of feel you've got from old gear to new equipment and uh, all sorts of stuff. So be sure to reach out to the team, customer service at freehealthlife.com. That is a fantastic way to get ready for the upcoming ski season. We've still got a couple uh, protector skis in batch number two left. It's only a few pairs of the 184 centimeter length. Everything else is sold out. And uh, like I've said in, in the last couple of podcasts is, um, you know, uncharted territory making skis during the season. So we're going to be, um, we've got a lot of material in house and we're just sort of trying to navigate what that looks like so we can have, uh, some skis available, uh, on the shop floor and online for those that are interested. And then we'll obviously have some demos like we did last year, uh, in the retail shop. So you have the ability to get out on snow and try them out, uh, both the protector one Oh five and the protector 95, so absolutely stay tuned for that and uh, let us know, you know, same thing. If, uh, if you let us know via the customer service email that that's something you're interested in, that's a really good way to kind of get on the radar for early season, um, whether you're traveling into Salt Lake uh, or you live in the area. Uh, as far as that goes with, t- uh, that kind of reminds me of uh, tunes and, uh, mounts and things like that. Uh, we do receive, uh, people shipping stuff to us. If you want your service done and it's an affordable option for you, you're always welcome to send it to us in Salt Lake and we can arrange that as well. Uh, other than that, I, I, I'm, I think, uh, always check out freehealthlife.com. Lots of new stuff. We've had a pretty cool summer. It's been fun to, to keep, uh, the team on during the summer our core group and, and, uh, thank you for all the support out there. Uh, we've put a a bunch of new items out and it's been fun to see, um, the support from, uh, from all the free heel lifers around the world, rocking some new gear and, uh, helping us, uh, get through the warmer months, but now we're getting towards winter. And, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. I'm going to do a little solo episode again, And then we're going to get back to having some guests in the upcoming weeks. But I started thinking, you know, this time of year is always when I start thinking preseason. I start thinking about, you know, what most of us do, you know, am I exercising enough? 
uh, you know, is my gear working? I think last season I kind of did a, a preseason breakdown of a lot of that kind of stuff, you know, equipment, um, what to check, fitness levels, all that. And I'm obviously doing that stuff and I'm thinking about that kind of stuff. But one of the things that, that I wanted to, to focus on today is really a, a message for the new telemark skiers out there that might be listening to this. And maybe you're, uh, you know, you've dabbled in telemark a little bit. Maybe you came across the podcast cause you're, you know, you're looking for information about telemark skiing. And I kind of wanted to just talk a little bit about, uh, getting into telemark skiing and really a message directed at the beginners and, you know, I I say this often in the podcast, whenever beginner telemark skiers come up is hopefully, uh, sometimes we don't speak enough to beginners. And I think that that's, you know, I get it. You know, if you're an experienced telemark skier, you're, you know, you may be rolling your eyes and thinking, ah, I don't want to hear about this. But I thought about, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of do something specific that sort of spoke to, uh, that person that maybe is, is outside looking in, maybe doesn't know a whole lot and talk a little bit about my own personal experience getting into telemark skiing. And I've talked a little bit in, about my story early on in, uh, in the podcast, <laughs> probably 144 episodes ago. <laughs> but, uh, if you bear with me, I'd like to, yeah, kind of share my experience getting into telemark because I feel like that's the one common thread that's so interesting and has always been so interesting to me is the fact that the story of how people got into telemark, I think becomes a real, uh, a real part of what draws people to it. And for someone who, who hasn't really put the effort into telemark skiing or even tried it like a, a, a beginner, I think there's, that might, might, may even sound a little strange, you know, because, you know, it's, uh, I think there's sort of this intangible thing. So I'm going to do my best sort of tell my story, uh, and, and then kind of give some, some tips about maybe, uh, what, what you can do to sort of prepare yourself as you're going into this season, uh, to do that. But starting off with kind of how I got into telemark skiing, this is all the way back in the early 1990s. Uh, 1993, and I, like a lot of people, saw some really good telemark skiers skiing down the mountain, and I think this is always the best form of advertising. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, you see, uh, you see someone skiing below the lift line, or you know, most likely you're at a, you're at a resort, you know, and I feel like that aerial view. That's kind of what I at least remember in my head is seeing these telemark skiers going down the hill. I'm probably going up the lift. I'm, I'm, I'm watching them make turns and I just think, man, this is, that's so cool. I want to try that. And, uh, you know, I think like most people, you know, the first question is, well, okay, I want to try this thing, but one, where do I get the gear? Uh, and, and for me, you know, this is in the early nineties, you know, there's still a lot of uh, metal edge cross country skis sitting around. I happen to have a pair in my garage, you know, and I was, I was young, I was 14 years old and I was fortunate those, those skis just happened to be there. Uh, I, I didn't really take into account the size of the skis that the, the, they were 210 centimeters and I was probably, you know, uh, f- you know, 14. I mean, I don't even, I was probably like five, eight. (laughs) So, uh, I don't know how many centimeters that would be. Uh, but I, you can, you can imagine very tall skis, old school style, uh, leather boots. And, you know, so I, I have this desire. I see this awesome telemark skier and I'm able to find gear and, the next thing is, is well, I'm like, how am I going to teach myself? I kind of know what it looks like. I know that it's sort of a lunging motion, or at least it looks like it. And uh, I go find this book, Cross Country Downhill, and I'm uh, I, I I check it out from the library, and I'm I'm just looking at the pictures, and 
uh, this is basically how I learn how to telemark ski is uh, I, I put it in a backpack. I go night skiing. I vividly remember taking the little double chair and, and going up the mountain at Brighton Ski Resort here in, in, in Utah. And I just was like, okay, I'm going to look at the pictures and read whatever text I can on the lift. Got to the top, you know, probably fell down a bunch getting on and off the lift because it was so awkward at first. And, uh, and then I'd put that, I'd put that book back in the backpack and then I would proceed to try to make the turns from the pictures. So, um, it really wasn't, you know, it wasn't easy for sure. Right off the bat, I was, you know, I mean that, especially the equipment I was on didn't make it easy, but I was intrigued. And I really think that that is the key ingredient to telemark is it's intriguing to the right people. You see it. There's something intriguing about it. You get the equipment and you go out on the hill and the motion is intriguing to someone. And then I think what started to happen from that first day on for me as a beginner is that intrigue grew and it sort of grew out of different parts of the telemark experience. The turn was intriguing. The weighting of my feet was intriguing. Uh, The motion of going down the hill in this sort of lunging motion was intriguing. Um, Different softness or hardness of snow was intriguing. And it was all these little things that just kept adding up and adding up. And then there's this one moment, you know, a couple days into my telemark experience where something clicks and you go from sort of holding your telemark stance going one way and then standing up and then trying to get your skis to go the other way. And then maybe you drop down into another turn and it goes from that. And then there's this moment where you link turns. And you're literally going from one lunging, lunging motion and you're transitioning to the next and then again, and you link these first turns. And I think this is the fundamental base of what you, of what telemark skiers connect with there's. And I also think that it's almost at that moment where you unlock the next level of intrigue. Because at first, I think most of us, you get into it out of curiosity and sort of this curiosity leads to more curiosity and intrigue, but it's that moment where you link the one turn and link it to the next and even link it again and again, and now you're flowing. You know, a lot of people think it's like dancing down the mountain But I think it's that experience that really is the common thread amongst all telemark skiers that I've met. And it's also, it's sort of the key to the club because not that it's an exclusive club by any means, because I think we're one of the more friendly snow sports enthusiasts out there, from my opinion, uh, generally speaking. But there's that key of linking turns that all of us, it's something you can connect with. And I've had this experience way later on in life where as I started exploring this idea, I really started coming across people in other countries, other states, other resorts, backcountry. And the passion of telemark skiers always seems to go back to when uh, somebody learned how to telemark ski. And this is what it was like for me. Once I linked turns, uh, I never went back. Literally. I haven't been on any other form of snow sliding equipment since 1993. And I think my passion has only grown. And you know, the best part about it is the intrigue, uh, sensation I think continues to grow in different ways and different aspects of telemark, but I think that's what's kept me doing it for so long. It's just it's it's just super interesting. And 
uh, it's just a way. I mean, at this point, it's a way of life for me, at least in the snow. And I've really enjoyed that. So I wanted to share a little bit about that just because to me, um, I think sometimes people, uh, people getting into telemark, it, it, it's, I think it can be a little intimidating on a lot of levels and, and it really shouldn't be. Um, but there's a lot going on, a lot of new equipment, a lot of unknowns. And if you're new out there, I just, I, w- I really want to encourage you to just let that little curiosity take you to the first step of finding some equipment whether you're borrowing it from someone locally or renting it or calling us up and finding a used setup. I think this is a, I I really want to encourage you to do that. And then I want to encourage you just to stick with it a little bit. Uh, You're going to need some time. And if you can just give yourself enough time to get to where you can link turns, and I'm not saying they're pretty, I'm not even saying you link more than two, (laughs) one to the left, one to the right, but you're connecting those two, but give it enough time to breathe, to let your, your, your curiosity go to that next level, because I have the sneaking suspicion that that's, what's going to happen to you most likely is if you can get past that barrier of entry of just finding the gear and then, you know, if you can find someone to teach you and give you a lesson, all the better. I think that's a nice shortcut. I'll tell you, uh, you know, or finding videos online. Great. Uh, unfortunately I didn't have that luxury in the early nineties. There was no YouTube and there was no, uh, smartphone for me to take in my pocket. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think that's, that's what I want to encourage you to do is just get to that, get to those first couple touch points of getting on the equipment, getting on the snow, and then just being patient with yourself enough to get to those linking turns. And, uh, I, I got a, I got an email literally today. Um, I'll probably save it for a mailbag episode, but it, it was kind of, kind of playing into what I was thinking about with this already. And, you know, it was this whole backstory, sort of a telemark origin story for people. And and they'll write in and they'll send it to the, to the podcast at freehilllife.com email. And it's really cool to read. And uh, I know sometimes I take a, a little while to get back on some of these, but I want you to know, I do read them. And I'm always fascinated because it really plays into what I'm saying about the, the seasoned, even the seasoned telemark veteran, it's, it always goes back to how it started. And I just think for, for these individuals and like I just shared my story, I really think that that's what's so cool. (laughs) And also the thing that makes telemark skiers probably misunderstood because people are always like saying, you know, uh, there's all these telemark jokes about people speaking up about how do you know a telemark skiers at a party? Oh, they'll come and tell you. Well, you know what? I think it's because of that. I really truly do. And that's why I don't buy into a lot of those jokes. Not, not, I mean, I'm not the funniest guy, but it, you know, it's, it's like, it's kind of, I, I almost celebrate that idea that these people come and talk about it. Cause I just think it's so interesting and it's a really cool bonding moment when you just meet someone that you have, you might not even have anything else in common except you both paid your dues and you got to that little touch point of like, you know what? I link turns, you know, and I, I'm going, I'm coming up on 30 years of doing it and that's wild to me, but I see the same excitement for people that are like, you know, three months or three years into it. And I think that that really needs to be cherished and, and you know, that's why I, really believe in being a protector of the turn and helping pass that on from generation to generation, you know, is, uh, it's important. It's an important way to slide on snow and it's not for everybody. So let's get down to a couple, you know, now thank you for, 
humoring me, humoring me and let me share my story with all of you out there about being a, a beginner telemark skier. But I kind of wanted to get into, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about maybe some of the things that you can do if you're thinking about telemark skiing and kind of how you can prepare to get into it this year. Uh, because I think, like I said, even my experience in the early nineties, when there was probably more telemark equipment available in backcountry shops, for instance, um, you know, this is, there's challenges to, to doing it and seeing it and being excited about it. Uh, don't let, <laughs> if you're, if you find this podcast or you find some information online, I think that's a good start. But the very first thing I would start doing is find somebody that you know that has the equipment. This is oh, as fast as you possibly can. If, you're, if you've got that little stoke factor, you, like me, where you saw the telemark skier going down the hill and you're like, that is so rad. I want to do it. Don't wait too much. Go find a friend that's got the telemark gear and just say, hey, can I, do you mind if I use that for a couple days You know, this, this upcoming winter? See if you can borrow it. And uh, the next step is used gear. And that's, you know, if you're willing to jump in the deep end, so to speak, and just say, you know what, screw it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this equipment right off the bat. Uh, I, would, I would recommend, you might not even know what to get, right? So that's why we're here. That's why Free Hill Life exists. Shoot, shoot our team an email. And just say, hey, you know, I heard, I heard the podcast. I'm interested. I'm a beginner. I'm thinking about doing this. And, but I have no idea where to start with equipment. And we can walk you through that, you know, and help you find something. In, in most cases, you know, for a couple hundred dollars, you can probably, you know, I'd say give yourself a budget of like three to 500 bucks. And you, you're going to be able to find some used boots bindings and, and, and a pair of skis that you can put those bindings on and, and you should be good to go. There's really not a whole lot to it. And I think, you know, yeah, there's all this expensive new gear. Um, and, but you can find some really good used equipment. So I just wanted to make sure you know that Free Heal Life, we're here as a resource. If you just need someone to kind of talk you through the basics of like what you should be looking for, and we might even have a setup for you in our used gear section that we can help walk you through, or at least take a couple minutes and just talk you, talk you through, hey, here's what you should be looking for. And uh, we're totally down to do that because that's that's what it's all about. So once you once you get over the gear the gear portion of getting into telemark it's it's really all about the reps and if if there's one thing i can sort of reiterate from my own personal story and sort of these little touch points is you need to give yourself a little time and uh if you're if you're not a patient person this is a good opportunity to teach yourself a little bit of patience because you're going to need it. And, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. You know, it's going to take some time to figure out the mechanics of telemark. And so I'd say once you got the gear figured out, you know, by sit, sit yourself down and say, Hey, I'm going to try this and I'm not just going to give up on day one on run one or this sucks. And uh, you're going to give yourself some time. Now, I want to tie that into a very important thing. Uh, me personally, I'm kind of a solo. I'm kind of a solo guy. You know, uh, I've just always been that way. I like to learn stuff. I like to do things solo a lot of times, especially when I was younger. Like learning to telemark. I honestly, I don't think I, I'm pretty sure I went by myself. <laughs> but here's what I'm going to suggest. Try telemark on a day where you can go out with some friends that are also interested and can get equipment and they want to try it sort of a buddy system. Here's what I would discourage against. If you sort of have your crew that you usually go out with and 
you know, they're alpine skiers or uh, snowboarders or, uh, you know, just the objective is just to go crush the day. That's where I want, I, I would discourage you from going with that group when you try telemark. And here's the reason why, and I think it's probably obvious as I'm talking about it. You're about to try something that requires a lot of skill, finesse, thinking, different movements. And more often than not, here's what I hear from people about why they haven't telemark skied yet. It's like almost, I would say it's like top three reasons. Like someone will be, someone will say, I've always wanted to try telemark skiing, but I can't keep up with my friends you know, um, or, you know, it, it, let's just stick on that note. And this is kind of what I'm saying. Go with somebody who has the same objectives for that day. You don't have to do it every day, but to, tr- unless you're, unless you're just super talented <laughs> and ready to roll and you're like, and, you, and your friends are cool with it, you know, and, and letting you flail a little bit, you know, I really think the first, you know, th- three to half a dozen times you go spend some time rolling solo or with a, 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 a group that can go at the same pace and actually mentor you or you're mentoring each other or you're watching each other or maybe it's a more experienced telemark skier that's just down to go out for you know a half a day or whatever but i really think that that's an important thing is don't go with a group that's just going to peer pressure you into thinking that telemark sucks because you can't keep up with them right off the bat. It will come in time. Trust me. (laughs) You're going to be able to keep up with whoever you want if you put the time and effort into it. But I think there's a lot of people. So I think that group mentality, when the group doesn't have that same interest level, it's tough. So I'm just warning you off the bat. And I think that actually discourages a lot of people from trying it. Uh, which is unfortunate. I will say if you're young, you know, and and you've just got this group of crushers, snowboard, alpine, whatever, and they're down to, you know, wait up on you for a little bit. Uh, that's a good way to get good fast, you know, and uh, that's cool too. So I'm not telling you to get rid of all your friends to tell them our ski. Um, but maybe I am. No, I don't. <laughs> um, I think I think that's a really really important thing. So get the equipment um, first. Find some equipment. Make sure you can use it for multiple days, and uh, make sure to be patient with yourself. Make sure to if you are going to go with somebody, make sure that they understand the mission. And they understand that you're gonna you're there to be patient and learn how to telemark ski, and try to create a positive environment for yourself. And uh, I think that's incredibly, incredibly necessary. Now, like I said, maybe that's a lesson. And uh, generally speaking, when you're paying an instructor, they're pretty supportive. <laughs> so that might be a good route. And also, they're gonna have lots of drills and things like that. Uh, But if you don't have the ability to get an instructor and you are going with a supportive group, here's the next thing I would suggest. Try to find some drills that either you make up or, you know, there's some videos online, uh, but you want to practice drilling. And drilling is such an important part of this because there's sort of the fundamentals of having your feet on two skis. So if you're coming from snowboard, you may want to start there. Pizza, French fries, very applicable to telemark uh, as you move on. Then obviously the stance that you want to be in and taking time to just feel that. Um, When I used to teach telemark skiing in a ski school many moons ago, uh, that, you know, that was one of the things that I would even have, uh, the people I was teaching do was, Hey, we're on a cat track. Let's practice our telemark stance. 
while we're in motion on a cat track that's very not intimidating for the most part you're not there's not a, a fall line you're not going to slide down the hill you're probably not going to you might crash but you're really not going to go anywhere and so these are the types of drills you know practicing what we call a lead change where your front foot you go from one foot in the front to the other alternating lunges while you're on a cat track moving but not you know not too quickly but creating drills like this i think that's a great thing to do in the beginning spend you know spend a couple runs literally just getting to know the skis doing some drills uh if you don't have the instruction because that's really what an instructor is going to help you do but just really try to understand how being on skis with your heel not attached and how that dynamic works and obviously getting into the stance. So drilling, I'm super big on that. Try to drill, uh, you know, old Telly Tay at the shop. That's one of the things I always admire about him is, you know, he's a phenomenal skier. Dude still drills when he's rolling solo sometimes, you know, and he'll, he's doing stuff like mono marking where he's actually, um, not actually changing the front foot and he's making turns in a telemark stance. And there's all sorts of, uh, drills that you can do. Uh, and, and, uh, it's just good no matter how good you are. I know I'm talking to the beginner here, but I think drilling basic fundamentals will always, always make it better, uh, you know, you're just, it's going to make you the best skier that you can be. And I know a lot of times we're just out there to shred, take a run, take a half a run, you know, oh, when you're on a boring cat track, come up with something funky, you know, and, uh, practice your balance practice, uh, you know, while you're standing there, uh, kick turns, you know, uh, you know, there's all sorts of little things you can do. Make it part of the, just make, make drilling the part of your routine when you go skiing. People won't even know you're drilling half the time. So fundamentals right from the beginning, that's what you got. So give yourself some patience, find a good partner, a good group, supportive group, and do some drilling along the way. And uh, I think the last thing I want to encourage the beginner to do is I want you to try to stick with it, not just to when you link turns, because that's when it's going to click. I guarantee it. You're going to link turns on some hard pack on a, on a nice groomer. And then you're going to be like, wow, this is really cool. But I want you to hold on to one next threshold. And that's powder skiing. Put it in the back of your head that when you, the very, 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 very first day, when you're thinking about telemark skiing, you're, you're doing these funny drills, you're, you're falling on your face, you feel goofy. I want you to have it in the back of your head that you're just going to be patient enough that you're going to get to the linking turns. And then immediately once you can link turns, I want you to just start looking forward to that very, very first powder day even if it's like three inches, four inches, because that's when it's really going to click. That's like the super click. <laughs> linking turns, that's when it clicks. Powder skiing linking turns is all time. And this is what it is all about. Um, it's getting in that soft snow and this dancing movement of moving down the hill but the, the weightlessness of that soft snow. And like I said, you know, even if you've got three, four, five, six inches, I mean, it's, I'm not talking, it doesn't have to be blower overhead, although, hey, I'm all about it. But I want you to just kind of have that in the back of your head that that's where you want to get to. And that's, that's going to that's gonna, uh, quench your thirst for more. I'll tell you that because... There's all sorts of cool things about making a telemark turn on hard pack, bumps, uh, catching air, whatever. But powder skiing is this whole other thing that it's it's not the easiest thing right off the bat, but it's it's one of the most amazing feelings that you're gonna have because it's so 
not only is the turn so dynamic, but you're going to be feeling something that's, again, hard to describe. And I know powder skiing is great for everybody and, and snowboarding and alpine skiing, but there's something very, very special about telemark skiing on soft snow. So keep that in the back of the head, day one, when you're falling over. <laughs> um, well, I... I think that kind of wraps up what I wanted to do. I, like I said, I really wanted to just give a nice short message to the beginner telemark skier and share my story a little bit. And I just, uh, you know, I, the mountains are a beautiful place to hang out. And I, th- I think all of us would agree. It generally is a very peaceful place. It brings you a lot of calm And it can also push against you even when you're in a resort in a, in a, not the most wildest of places, but, uh, telemark skiing offers a nice challenge and it, it enhances the challenge on the mountain and it can really bring a lot of, um, joy to an experience on the mountain that I think is very unique to itself. Uh, it's an endless game of chess with yourself and trying to understand, uh, all of the dynamics and making everything sort of work, uh, in unison at the same time. And it's just rad. That's it. And, uh, I'm really, uh, really grateful to be part of a community of people that really are passionate about their own, stories about how they got into telemark. And, uh, so if you're listening to this podcast and you made it this far, I would absolutely love to hear how you got into telemark when it clicked for you. Um, maybe some of the things I said today resonated with your story and I would love to hear them. So if you got this far, send me an email and and give me a short little paragraph or whatever of, Hey, this is, this is how, this is when it clicked for me. This is how I got into it. And you can send that to podcast at freeheallife.com. And uh, maybe I can make a little episode of telemark origin stories. I would love to share some of those because I think they're, uh, they're very, very, very cool. So as always to wrap up, please consider signing up for our mailing list. It's a great way for us to connect with you a couple times a week. Uh, obviously we want to be your preferred telemark shop where you shop for stuff. We want to be that premier brand now that we're making skis and other items. And we want to provide a awesome space for telemark skiers worldwide and provide information and service and all of the good stuff that goes with our amazing turn on snow And so we hope you'll check us out. You can go to freehealllife.com. Like I said, email me your stories, podcast at freehealllife.com. You can find me on the old Instagram at Josh Nomadson, as well as Facebook. And we've been, uh, I've been pretty active on there lately, especially with sort of additional items that tend to go along with the podcast. And that's been a lot of fun. So Uh, I hope you'll check all that out and I really appreciate you listening and to all you beginner telemark skiers out there, uh, thanks for checking this out and I hope you have an amazing winter and hopefully you can shoot me an email after it clicks for you and I would love to hear that story as well. So until next week, spread telemark always my friends. See you later.